Okay, I wanted to demonstrate this uh, TW5 uh, made by Fisher uh, using the on handle method. Uh, so what we do is first we turn the transmitter on and we make sure it's on inductive. Uh, you can use the uh, the DTI here on or off. It just uh, pulsates the uh, the sound. Uh, we'll leave it off for now. On the transmitter, you want to uh, turn it on. And what you want to do is get the sensitivity as high as possible and still get a null. Now you obtain a null by using this top knob here. What you want to do is of course, this shouldn't be on the ground. You're supposed to do this above the ground to a height where it's comfortable for you to hold. So the null is right around here. So if I keep turning it, it goes up. I go back the other way and I get my null. And then another peak. So the null is in between the two peaks here. So once I've established the, uh, the null, I'm ready to locate. You know, if I got it, got it above the ground here, I can get a much better null. There's a good null. Now, see these two sticks here. We've got one stick here and another stick here. I know there's a cable here because I traced it earlier. So what you do is you use this for blind searches. If I didn't know where the cable was I'd just keep walking. So what I do is I walk and I'm waiting for that meter to peak. You can see it right there, it just peaked. I just walked over the cable. And there it goes again. And where this peaks is right over the transmitter on the rear here. You can see my, my stick here. And that is peaking right where that cable is. So once I've established where the cable is, I can keep going a little further down, walk again, wait for it to peak, yep, and there it is. Doesn't like my camera close to it, screwing up the, uh, that's what's causing is the camera screwing it up. All right. But. There's the peak right there over the cable. Huh, interesting. So here's my peak. And you can see that's where the cable is. There's another marker here. Uh, in addition to finding uh, cables, this will also find uh, underground objects and it acts just like a uh, metal detector, only it detects objects much deeper into the earth than a regular metal detector would. Um, you can see I have a metal object here, it's about uh, you know, a foot long, four inches high. I pass over it, you notice that it peaks over the uh, receiver. It's just the opposite of finding cables where it peaks over the uh, transmitter. Again, you're looking for a peak. You can see how high I am. I got this thing about three or four feet above the ground. It was still 
picking up that object. Now I just realized that the camera itself is screwing up the, uh, the transmitter. Here. It doesn't make sense because it's a piece of metal. And uh, it's going to do that. So, peaks over valve boxes over the receiver and peaks over the transmitter when finding cables. And that's pretty much how the arm handle works. And the trick to this whole thing is to get a nice null. Get a nice tight null using the highest sensitivity possible using this uh, front knob here and receiver sensitivity. Now this handle here seems to work best on these old TW5s for some reason. I use the TW6, just doesn't seem to work as nice. And this handle also works with the Metrotech 480s. Uh, it fits right in there. Uh, not sure why a Fisher uh, handle would fit on a Metrotech unit, but it does. And uh, so they're using these these uh, these type of detectors to uh, to locate underground caches. Uh, especially in Eastern Europe, they're using these to find you know. Ammo from World War II that's been buried for 60, 70 years, and they're like 10 feet down. And they use these guys to, to locate those. Just because of its its uh, deep earth locating capabilities.